I'm Parker Litchfield. We're gonna talk about sewing machines. Yeah. <laughs> All right, at the risk of sounding too clickbaity and online salesy, I'm gonna give you five basic pointers that I really wish I knew when I was first looking for a leather sewing machine. I wasted quite a bit of money buying the wrong machines until I finally found one that I really liked. So if it's possible, I wanna help you avoid that. All right, really quick, I wanna go over those five things. First thing to look for, make sure the machine's a walking foot. Two, make sure that the presser foot height is tall enough for the project you're working on. Three, make sure your machine takes the thread that you need. Four, figure out what type of machine you want, whether it's a flatbed or a cylinder head or any of the others. And five, you're probably not gonna find a machine that has this already, but you have to make sure that you can install it. Speed reducer. If you're gonna sew leather like we do, like wallets, anything with detail stitching, you have to have a speed reducer on your machine. Um, unless you wanna be hand cranking it the whole time. I'll explain that a little bit better once we get into it. So this is the Juki 1508, LU-1508N. There's a model one step up from this called the 1508H, NH I think, and it's for heavier weight leather. But this one from what I can tell has done everything that I've needed it to do. I really lucked out on this one, right here because this was a used machine that came into our local dealer and they said they never get these used. So I was about to pull the trigger and buy a new one until this one came in and uh, I was able to pick it up for about $1,400, which is just ridiculous for this machine. Brand new, they're about three grand. So I really scored on this. Keep your eye out on Craigslist and classifieds, local classifieds, because um, they pop up here and there. All right, so the first point, make sure it is a walking foot. That is crucial for leather work. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically the feed mechanism that pulls the leather through the machine. There are a few different types of feed mechanisms. The ones I'm familiar with are the walking foot like this or the compound um, needle feed, which basically the walking foot stays still and the needle goes up and down and pulls it through like this. I hope these motions are very helpful to you when learning about sewing machines. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my top thread out of there. So you can see how the feet work together and pull the leather through. And there's also a feed dog underneath that is pulling it through on the bottom as well. The first machine I bought was just a really cheap used Juki that I found on KSL Classifieds. And uh, it, it had what looked like a, a walking foot, but it was actually just a mock, like a faux walking foot. It had an attachment. It, it made it kind of pretend to be a walking foot, but it wasn't truly a walking foot. I was so frustrated right off the bat, couldn't even use it. It, it just did not what, do what I wanted it to do. So I ended up selling that thing, losing a little bit of money on it. It's frustrating, but that's why I'm making this video so you don't have to do it. Okay, number two, make sure that the presser foot height is tall enough to get in the leather that you're working with. So for instance, I'm using um, three to four ounce leather. Some of our wallets have about four layers of leather and this thing just handles it beautifully. So when I pull that all the way up and I bring the needle all the way up to its max height, I've got plenty of room in there for what I need to do. Yeah, so that's a big one. If you're gonna be doing Western tack and some big heavy belts where you're doing multiple layers of belt leather, nine to 10 ounce up to 13 ounce, veg tan belt leather, you're gonna need a really tall presser foot and that's when a machine like the Cowboy 3200 or the 4500 or the Cobra Class 3 or 4, when those come in handy. That's a harness stitcher machine meant for really heavy duty leather. You have tons of presser foot height. You have a big fat needle with 207 thread going in. I thought I was gonna be doing a lot more work like that and it just, my Cowboy 3200 didn't get used very much, so I ended up selling it. Some of you have been asking that because I did a Cowboy 3200 review video and I talked it up to the moon, I loved it. I still love it. It was my favorite machine that I've ever owned. I just wish my projects um, catered to that machine more. Um, I'm using a much thinner leather where I'm using a smaller needle, lighter thread. Um, I really like this flatbed more. I'll talk about that too more in a minute. Okay, so presser foot height, make sure before you buy it, make sure that your project is gonna fit under that presser foot before you pull the trigger on any machine. All right, number three, do a little bit of research and make sure that the machine you're buying can handle the thread size that you want. Now, if you're just getting into sewing, you probably don't know what thread size you want. So just as a general guide here, these, this 
This is an example of one of our wallets. And I use a size 92 weight thread on there. That's size 92. Sometimes I'll use a 138 and sometimes I'll go as small as 69. Anywhere in that range, 69 to 138, is gonna be really good for wallets. I gotta make this point so, so that you can learn from my mistakes a little bit. When I started out sewing, I really wanted the Cowboy 3200 to work. And you, I believe you can go down to a smaller thread on a, on a 3200, but I never did. So I sewed about 500 of our wallets with 207 weight thread, which is really heavy thread, and a big old fat needle, and um, it poked some really big holes. It just made a huge difference in the way that the wallet looked. The bigger your stitch is gonna be, the more the flaws show, and really hard to get a nice clean looking stitch with bigger thread and a bigger needle. And, and so just based on some testing I've been doing, it seems to be that the smaller I go on the needle and the thread, uh, the cleaner the stitch I get. Make sure you're getting the right thread. If you're gonna do wallets, uh, similar to what we're making out of three to four ounce leather, I would suggest anything from a 69, 92 to a 138 thread. And before you pull the trigger on your machine, make sure that your machine can handle that. Most household machines won't go any bigger than a size 69. Most industrial machines will go up to a 138 though, so you should be pretty safe on almost anything you're looking at if it's an industrial machine. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the work area. Yes. So when I first bought my Cowboy 3200 and I did somewhere around 500 wallets on it, I was using something similar to this. This is a Cowboy 341. Um, I really love this machine, but it has a cylinder head like this. Um, I think the name kind of explains what I'm talking about here, but basically it'll, it will allow you to get really hard angle stitches on bags and hats and, and things that are just kind of awkward to stitch. That cylinder head really helps. Anyway, there are certain projects where a cylinder head is a really good option. And, and I'll tell you right now, it will work for a wallet. Like I said, I sewed about 500 wallets from our Kickstarter campaign on a cylinder head machine like this. It's just not ideal. And I didn't know that until I bought this Juki with a flatbed and I realized how much nicer it is to sew when you have this this bed to kind of push along and and you're not trying to balance and hold the wallet at the same time. I don't know, that's one of those things that's kind of hard to explain and maybe it's just pure preference, but at least for wallets and the type of products we make, a flatbed machine makes a lot more sense. So the last one, number five, this one is really important and this is probably based more on my lack of research, but I really wish I would have known this when I started looking for sewing machines. Um, the first thing I did was I bought that Juki. It was more of a tailoring type machine, um, not a true walking foot. It only did about size 69 thread, really meant for light, lightweight materials. And the, the thing that surprised me the most is it had a clutch motor, and as soon as I turned it on and pushed that pedal, it went about a thousand miles an hour. I, there's no way I could have sewn a wallet on it. It's just blew my socks off. And so my first thought was, well, how am I gonna sew on this? There's no way. So that was a big problem for me. And once I realized it wasn't the right machine, it was an easy decision just to sell it. I was trying to figure out what makes the cowboy machines so good for leather. I know a lot of Western tack guys use those and Cobras. And I realized they come with a pre-installed servo motor and speed reducer. As soon as I bought that 3200, I put it together, turned it on, I started working that pedal and you have so much control over the speed. You can get it to go so slow you could practically thread it while you're sewing. So that was a game changer for me. Once I, once I saw that, I was so scared to move away from cowboy machines because I thought, man, I, I need it to go this slow. Until I realized there are eBay shops and sewing machine dealers that will sell speed reducers that fit almost any machine. They're pretty much universal. It's, three bolts to install, You got and I went down to AutoZone and bought an extra belt. Um, let me show you what a speed reducer looks like. Okay, so when I bought this machine, the belt used to run from the wheel up here down to the motor right here, and that was it. What I did was install this big black gear right here, that's the reducer. So I installed it and I bought another belt, so now we have two belts, the one going from the machine down to the reducer and then from the reducer to the motor. 
So this is a pretty universal part. It's these three bolts right here. I flipped them the table over, um, drilled those into the table. You have to do a little bit of alignment to make sure that it lines up and everything, but, but basically it's a really easy install and I bought it for a little under $100. Every single time that needle goes into the leather, it's punching a hole. So you don't really have the luxury of messing up picking the stitch and then re-sewing something like you do with canvas or any other fabric. You have to be sure that every time that needle goes in the leather, it's exactly where you want it. And the only way to really do that and efficiently make batches of wallets at a time is to have a speed reducer like that so that you're not hand cranking that wheel around every corner. What I found was because it's such a universal part, you could put it on any machine. You could put it on a Conso 206, um, the RB12, the RB5. Those would be great machines for leather. The Juki 1541. Um, these are just some of them that I had looked at and tried out. But basically you can turn any industrial machine into a leather machine by adding more torque and slowing it down with a speed reducer. I bought mine from a sewing dealer through eBay. So I'm gonna put the link down in the description so that you can pick one up. So as long as you have those five guidelines to consider while you're out on your quest for the perfect sewing machine, um, you should have a pretty good handle. The thing is there are so many machines that could work. So I don't wanna just tell you the only machine that's gonna work for you is a Juki 1508. That one works really great for us. It's a little bit on the expensive end. And I, I wouldn't want you to think that's the only option because you could also go out and find a, a really cheap Conso 206, install your own speed reducer and have a really awesome machine for like five or 600 bucks. So don't throw anything out the window. Just go through the list of the five things. Make sure that it's a walking foot. Make sure you got enough room under the presser foot. Make sure it'll take heavy enough thread that you want to use. It's a good idea to pay attention to what, if, whether you want a cylinder head or the flatbed style machine, just for convenience and luxury, more of a comfort thing. And then make sure that it, it has the potential for a speed reducer. As far as, I, as far as I know, you could pretty much put a speed reducer on any machine. I, I wish I had all these guidelines in mind while I was looking for the right machine. I probably would have bought this one a long time ago. I've got the right one now. I'm getting a lot better at sewing. I am by no means an expert. I'm, in a lot of ways, I'm still a beginner. I'm still new to this, but these are the things that I've learned and I think it can help you. So if you have certain questions about what to look for in a machine, uh, leave it in the comments or, or uh, send me an Instagram DM, send me an email, whatever. Uh, let me know and I'd love to talk about it. I'm an open book. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, you better do it. Your life may depend on it. No, that's not a threat. That's not a threat. Just go subscribe because it could be the best thing you did all day. Give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, you guys. <laughs>